I'm going to demonstrate Japanese koi today. Uh, first, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the supplies that I will be using. They're the four gentlemen, or the four treasures. Um, you've got the paper. The paper is uh, the uh, fiber paper. It's all handmade. Uh, brushes, you've got the uh, medium brush, soft brush, and hard brushes. Each brush is used for a different subject. The ink and the ink stone. And I'm going to start out with the ink. So I get the brush wet, go into a little bit of ink. I want to go with a lighter tone. So I take some ink out, get it softer by adding water. And what I need to do is I need to show the energy in my strokes as I go. Start with the mouth, the little whiskers. And then the face. And the gills. And the eye. The eye on this side, you're going to be looking at it from sideways. Eyebrow. The eye on the other side. Only going to see half of that eye. Now, going to open its mouth, make him smile. Center of the mouth. And the body. always give you problems. And the other half of the body here. Now for the little fin. And to make him look like he's swimming, this is going to be going back. Put him in the water. And now for the tail that crosses over. I'm going to get one right back here. Now from there, it's going to get little lines that's going to indicate scales. If I do just a painting of fish, then I don't give it a lot of detail. If I put the fish in another painting uh, like uh, lotus, then I don't do the scales and do a lot of detail. If it's just koi, then I will do a lot of detail. Giving it the little lines. And 
and this requires a steady hand, which right now mine is not too steady. And what I try to do is have enough ink in my brush that I can go all the way down without reloading because if I reload, if I put my brush back in the ink again, it's going to be darker. And I want this to gradually get lighter as it goes to the back to show the distance. And the tail is upside down, so it's going to go the opposite direction. And you're only going to see part of him on the other side because you're looking at it from the side. Now, reload just a little bit so I'll have enough to go all the way down again. So now I'm going to crisscross. And this is making the scales. A lot of time in this art, it's not what you see, it's what you leave to the viewer's imagination. It's what's there, but you, your mind will fill in the blanks. You don't always have to put the strokes. And that's what makes this art fun. It's very free. It's. Uh, spontaneous. You don't worry about whether or not it looks exactly the way it's supposed to look. As long as it has energy, then you've got a good painting. Now, next I'm going to go in with a different brush and I'm going to soften this area right around the bottom and that's going to make it look a little softer to make it look like it's turning under the water. So it makes it round. Putting in the little dots all the way across. And all you do on this is just follow the contour. They get smaller. And that's the bottom down there. Follow the contour of the of the body, the shape. And fish is very symbolic in, in uh, the Asian culture. It uh, brings luck, prosperity. If you've got a couple that's getting married, fish is a real good uh, thing to give the newlyweds, it brings many children and luck and prosperity. If you have luck, uh, fish in your office, it keeps the cash flowing. We always have the money going out, but we never have, a lot of times we don't have the money coming in. So fish in your office will have the money coming in as well as going out, according to feng shui practitioners. Now the, the koi are very colorful. Uh, they have many different colored dots. Uh, you can design them any way you want to, basically. I'm going to start using some color. And when you use color, white is one of the most important colors you can use in this art. The white is what makes the color stick into the paper. Uh, this color, this paper, everything goes into the paper and stays into it. It's different than Western watercolor where it just sits on top and doesn't soak in. This actually soaks into your, into your paper, so it becomes part of it. If you don't use enough white, then when you get ready to mount this and you have to put this on a thicker sheet of paper in order to frame it, and when water hits it, it all, it fades out. So white is very important. So I load white halfway into a brush. I'm using a soft brush this time. And you want the water to come from the end of the brush to mix in with the colors 
so that you still get this water so everything blends. This is different kind of art as well because you don't mix your colors out here and then put them on your brush. You put them on your brush in layers and they stay in layers and that way it comes out and it's all one brush stroke. It's kind of interesting the way it works. And these are the Marie's colors. These are mineral colors. They're also different than Western water colors because of the binder. They're, they have a binder of, of uh, glue. It's usually fish glue or tree, peach tree sap glue. So I go into yellow, orange, so it's into layers in my brush. Now I want to go into a little bit of a red color because I want to give him, I want him to be colorful. Red is the most sought after color in koi. Some of these koi in red are very expensive and but red mixed with white sometimes you get pink so you have to be careful with it. A little bit of, of red mixing that all together. So I'm going to start right here in the center of the head because this is where I want my darkest color to be. The tip end of my brush is going to stay in the center. That's the darkest color. And then you can see as you come around, you get the yellow, you get the red, you get the orange as it comes out in layers. So you can decorate your fish any way you want to decorate it. Um, some of the fish have many dots, some have few, some are solid, they're just all different kind of uh, patterns on the fish. A lot of them also have black dots on them as well, black spots. So you want to always have the soft, watery look around the outside edge. Now on top of the eye of the fish is a little bit of blue mixed with white because their eyes are a little little bulged. They're kind of, they have a big fat eyebrow. So we're going to go into white, a little bit of blue, just enough to give me a small amount of color and I'm going to go over the eyebrow and over the eye there. Now I'm going to take the blue without the white and I'm going to go right along the body with a little bit of pale blue and that makes him look like he's in the water. Later when this dries, I'm going to go back and put white all around and in each one of these, these uh, squares right here, these diamond shapes, I'm going to put white in all of those. If I do it now, it's going to run overflow. As you can see, this is overflown right here. So if I put the white in and it comes down here, then when I get ready to wash the background, it'll have a ghost shadow and I, it won't cover. So I'm going to save that for last. Now that basically is the first fish. So in order to make these look like they're coming down, usually what you want to do is, is form an S pattern of making the, the chi flow. So I'm going to add one over this way, or maybe one coming from this direction since I've got him going this direction. And I'm going to use a different brush. I'm going to use a harder bristle brush. I'm 
going into some of the dark. I don't want it to be even with the tail, so I'm gonna, gonna have him coming right along here. And the whiskers, open the mouth. And this one I'm gonna look at from the eye is gonna be from this side. You'll see on that one. And the body. Oops. mouth. This one, the center is going to be a little more toward the center. The other one, you're not going to be able to see that one. I'm going to change this line a little bit. And I'm going to let this one fade out into the water, so I'm not going to make it real clear back in here. So you've got some that are going to be very clear and others that are going to be deeper under the water. Oh, got to do that. These are always a little harder because you can't tell what direction they're going. And again, these are just going to fade away. And those are going to fade away. And the crisscross. A 
lot of this art, the first thing I tell my students is this will teach you to see in a totally different way. You will start to notice nature and all of this art is all about nature. This is one that I've uh, almost completed. It's not quite ready to go. I still need to do a thicker, heavier wash in it. But taking this one a little further, putting the white in, putting the eyes in the, in the fish, and washing the background to where you make them look like they're sinking in, into the water, adding a little bit of the, of the grass in the water as well. It gives it dimension. And the other one to where I didn't finish at the top, and this one where it was fading away would look similar to this fish that I put down in the water. And then the orange fish is the main fish, so everything else will be um, focused around this focal point, which is the main fish, and that would be this one right here. So. That's basically it. Well, Darlene, that was really impressive what you did creating those koi fish. Okay. And so, uh, you know, for anyone that's watching, where can they go to go ahead and learn how to do this from you? I teach at two different locations uh, at the Workhouse Art Center in Lorton, Virginia, and also in my studio, Softbrush Studio in Alexandria, Virginia. Now, I see we have two books from you, and now, we can see lots of different types of uh, paintings that you've done with mm -hmm. the books. Now, is there a website that people can go to as well to see your art, or uh, do they actually just come see you in person? They can come to see me in person at my studio. They can go to the Lorton Workhouse Art Center in Building 16. I'm an associate member there. And also, you can go to my website at www.darlingkaplan.com.